what's up guys it is dan from fight with and today i'm joined by a fighter i'm very excited to speak with if you know anything about me you know i love my welterweights and today's guest is no exception to that rule today i'm joined by somebody who is a fan favorite fighter known for exciting fights and is the ear collector in some regard you know somebody who doesn't shy away from making it a dog fight and more importantly gives it his all every single time and has amassed some amazing wins including a three fight win streak as of late and also a great win over tim means you know we're talking to max Payne griffin today how are we doing today max we're good, bro. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely, Max. And the nice pleasure intro. Is, the pleasure is all mine, man. I gotta say, because as a fan favorite of the sport, you know, anytime Max Payne steps in that octagon or we get a fight announcement, we're always super excited because we know what you bring to the octagon. Talk to me about how everything's been and how's life been for Payne and the ear collector. Because, I mean, that that's, I mean, you've, you've taken that nickname with stride, but tell me how everything's been. <laughs> man, it's been good um really just hella busy um you know training training like a maniac training more um better practices different spots um it just been a lot man it's been a whirlwind it's been a whirlwind of training but getting better we're doing the right stuff not over training but at the same time working on my stuff outside of fighting you know working on because i mean i fight twice a year so i've been um working a lot man working a lot all different kinds of projects different incomes just different getting my hands and everything i can now because i mean um i'm a brand and the ufc doesn't pump everyone like they should so it's on us the sooner fighters recognize that it's on us to fucking make our lives you know you can't just lean on them to to make you rich per se you got to do it on your own and uh, we're, we're full steam ahead, baby. Pain train. No, yeah, absolutely. I love what you mentioned. It's kind of like dipping your toes into everything and really making the most of what is a short window of fighting. Like you mentioned, fighting only two times a year, that's only so much income that you can go towards supporting yourself, your family, and those around you. But really dipping your toes into the entrepreneurship side and the self-brand, I feel like you've really showcased an ability of doing so in such a way that fighters should take notice and example of that. Like you said, painting a foundation Talk to me about being able to to do these separate business endeavors and really diving headfirst into the world of entrepreneurship as a fighter, but also as somebody looking to capitalize on their brand. You know, I mean, like you like you said, we fight twice a year, but what am I doing in this whole other time? It's hard to depend on that money from them, you know? I mean, when you get it, cool. A little hundred stacks and do something with it. But when you're not fighting, you're making that money stretch, you're making it last. Um, I mean, I'm into everything, um, cannabis space. I just got my own hot sauce. It just came out, um, super fire. Um, and even on, um, even avenues, pe fighters, um, I mean, I work with different agencies, distinction agency, these different marketing agencies, which are really putting me in good positions, um, that do all the sports, not just, not just fighting, but I've been on LinkedIn a lot. I think it's an untapped market for uh, a lot of fighters. It's really the Facebook, um, uh, of business per se so it's an easy way to connect with a lot of these ceos and cfos and these 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 brand these the good the, the the people in the companies that you need to speak to you know what i mean so uh i've been doing a lot on linkedin getting i'm uh jumping into the acting stuff sign with pressy agency they're out of albuquerque new mexico so i'm trying to start doing some uh you know, commercials, movies, just just getting in the spot. Because, I mean, I have the golden ticket, right, for being UFC, UFC this and that. It'll get you in the door. It'll get you speaking to these people, you know, the check mark and all that. Like, um, it gives me more access to where I need to go. But it's on me to, to capitalize fully and choose what works. And the, I, I think the reason why I do do a lot of things to get my feet wet, I mean, first, you need a bunch of incomes anyway. But, you, you know, you can see what you really like. You know, you might not, not like selling juice or something, you know what I mean? So it's like, but you got to find out that you don't like selling it. So um, it's it's been fun. It's been fun. No, yeah, absolutely. It's always a journey just to find out different avenues to go down. Like, and you mentioned really finding what you like and kind of sticking to it and getting you, well, although you're a UFC fighter, first and foremost, and an MMA fighter, using that opportunity to network and get your foot in the door and get certain opportunities, find what else you like. I feel like oftentimes fighters often let the fighting become their personality and not use it as an opportunity to really explore who they are as a person. 
But I feel like we, you know, we see that with all the different endeavors, all the different interests and hobbies that coincide with who Max Payne Griffin is. Is there one opportunity or one market or one kind of network or door that you've opened that stands out a little bit above all the others? Or is the, are they all just kind of equally interesting to you? I would say I'm doing a lot of mentoring and keynote speaking, uh, motivational speaking, that kind of things. Um, I talk to schools. I talk to kids. I talk to some teenagers that are getting in trouble right now. <laughs> Fuck, man. Stop getting in trouble, man. Shit. But I think it's that. I think um, because I do get a lot of mentions, bro. I, I do get a lot of people hitting me up like for advice, like, you know, anything from you know, their girl breaking up with them. They don't know how to handle it or, you know, them wanting to start MMA and what should they do. So I get a lot of people that reach out to me and I'll speak to my mental coach about this. Um, like, why me? You know, why is everyone asking me? Like, do I seem like I'm just a fucking question answer? You know what I mean? Do I seem like I'm the guy that answers these questions? But um, he said this because I'm authentic. You know, I'm authentic. I'm real. So I will tell you a real answer. I'm not going to bullshit. So... Um, I've been doing a lot more, um, I mean, doing the public speaking, I spoke at a, uh, solar company. I spoke at a AC company a couple weeks ago, you know, like, but I do talk about the kids and I feel like that's, that's going to be one of my biggest impacts. Cause I do have the UFC ticket to get in that door. So, Hey, I could, and I don't know, it's cause I'm UFC people listen to me or what, well, you know, more than some of these kids, parents even. So I feel like it's on me to to speak the right things. And um, we're actually working on a nonprofit. My buddy, I'll speak this a little bit about it. It's planted, but um, it's like a men's, it's gonna be men, like like a men's group, but like a men's club. I feel like, um, I mean, not, not off track, but I went to a, a men's retreat, yoga retreat a couple of weeks ago and my good friends, Michael Fong. Um, we did a shit ton of yoga, way more than I'm used to. And like three times a day and um it was good though it was it, it was good to kind of unplug and really zen the fuck out you know zen out um but we talked a lot we had this thing called circle time and stuff and i got to run the guys through like an mma workout and got real primal real ah, punches and push-ups and running and hands up and kick like like some savage shit you know that there it's a lot more wild than like yoga per se right yoga is like real peaceful and like but we were yelling at them ah but the guys loved it guys don't have most guys don't have like an outlet um and we spoke about it at the end um a lot of guys never get there never get that like amped up and ah i'm at the end we're just yelling ah flexing ah after like a sweat box workout i mean slip in on the floor and um, but what I got from that, a lot of guys, when we, I spoke to them at the end, most people, or at least the, the people here, um, not like Silicon Valley guys and just more well-off people, um, uh, their family's great. Um, their kids are great. Their job's great, but they're not fulfilled. There's not like, there's not something that drives them. They, they, a lot of them has lost their passion, um, for something, you know, like, they're doing fine, right? Their bills are paid, but they feel empty. You know what I mean? And um, a lot of guys don't have guys to like speak to about problems and issues and stuff. And because it's, it's kind of taboo, like for a guy to have a problem or need advice, um, and the, mental, the mental health stuff. So as I've been working on this project with doing the men's club and then going here, like just this is what he scheduled. It made me realize, like, we need this. We need more guys to hang out and, like, like good role models. Not just people that just party all the time and do dumb shit, but guys that are really doing shit. Yo, what would you do with this situation? Oh, I do this. What would you do? Everyone has different different outlooks, but uh, I think we're going the same way. You know what I mean? So I definitely want to get more into that. Um, helping men be men, man, and being strong and getting shit done and feeling fulfilled you know I, I was talking to them and i work out with my friends every day and we beat each other up and choke each other out and go push ourselves to our max and most people don't experience that so i'm lucky you know i'm blessed to um i am with the homies you know sweating and 
getting better and a lot of people they're just not they don't have any real help i agree and you know something you've mentioned i really wanted to highlight there was the the level of unfulfilledness some people just really feeling unfulfilled and coming to you more importantly as a vessel for inspiration i think because there's a lot of inspiration to be drawn from fighters like yourself you look at what you've accomplished over the course of 14 coming on 15 years and you look at the the platform you've built for yourself everything that you've built for yourself there's tons of inspiration i think more importantly to be drawn from fighters like yourself because of not only the level of authenticity that you present and you pose but also just the way that you go about it i think fighting is one of those things which is either you're all in or you're not and the way that the most fighters like yourself somebody of your caliber of your skill set and of your level go about it there's a there's a certain level of discipline that needs to be applauded and taken after and i think we really get to see that with the people you've surrounded yourself with and more importantly how you've gone about going with in your career which is at the highest level no no lackluster no lack of motivation you know just going at it 100 percent full steam without a lack of or lapse of judgment or anything and that goes to the people you surround yourself with i always like to say the sacramento fighting scene doesn't get the love that it the, that it deserves you know you look at what sacramento has built as a whole <laughs> You know, Team Alpha Male, you look at where you yeah. train, the fighters that come out of Team Alpha Male and Sacramento as a greater whole. We're talking Cody Garbrandt, we're talking your Uriah Faber's gym up there, you know, Vyacheslav Barshop, Corey McKenna, yourself, Anthony Fluffy Hernandez, who in my opinion and your good friend does not get the love that he deserves for how good of a fighter he is. Talk to me just about being in that environment and how that inspires you. Because that's one of the best environments is up in the Sacramento outdoors in nature with so many good fighters yeah no you're right you're right you're right um we really got the recipe out here we don't always get the love we deserve you know but that's kind of how life is but how we're at this point i mean we got alpha male we got mma gold um we got mary nobles we got game fit we have um syndicate jiu-jitsu so we have like we found like what works and what's working and then we're doing like the shit out of that. And then also um, what I found, a lot of us trust each other. You know, a lot of gyms, you're getting hurt. You're fucking, you're, I, I'm i really big on like intent with who I'm training. I could tell if someone's trying to like knock me out. I could tell if someone's trying to waffle me and hurt me. You know what I mean? That there, There's a difference in levels and we're real high level. And we have a lot of respect for each other. There's no ego. So it's like, he got me this round. Okay, I'm going to get him back, you know, but I'm not trying to hurt him per se. Uh, but you go to a lot of other gyms, the ego's there, man. And um, they, they're they not looking out for you. And, and and a lot of gyms might say, well, we're not. Well, okay, that's fine. But that's not where I'm training. You know what I mean? You can go hard, but not hurt the homie. You know, you could pull that head kick back. You don't have to stone cold knock him out and practice. And then what? He, he, he's out of fight because he has a concussion for two months. You know what I mean? So we're in a place now where we really trust my teammates, um, who we train with. We do extra shit. Me, Anthony, uh, we meet up in his garage every fucking Tuesday and just do wall work, grind. Me, him, and Ryan Loader just rotate. Ryan Loader's D1 All-American. He's he's coming up from Alpha Male. He's really fucking good. Um, but we're rotating. I'm on Anthony trying to take him down. And then my back to Loader is trying to take me down. And then... Anthony's taking loader down and then it's just we rotate we bro we're doing the the work we need in like a fine fine tight space and just getting after it in the in in the things that we need to work on you know um but it's been a lot of that oh this works this doesn't work get him out of there oh this guy's trying to hurt hurt us he's not invited back so it's like we've really been weeding out who we're with and um pushing we're pushing man we're pushing and we're just i mean anthony just got moved number 15 um yeah highest takedown percentage um highest significant strike percentage best takedown defense like we're working with the best anthony's my little brother my little mexican brother i've been with him for 15 years i've seen him yeah i've he's been under my wing for 15 years i love anthony um my other teammates but we're really um, we're getting better. <laughs> That's the only way to we're put it. Better, man. Yeah, man. I mean, it's been phenomenal just to see, you know, the evolution. Like you mentioned, weaving out the bad apples, 
finding those margins to really improve within because in year 15 you've already done so much in your career and so much that you've improved upon as a fighter throughout getting to the ufc throughout staying in the ufc but i feel like it's really about finding those fine margins and little things it's those little details when you get to the later stages in your career that really stand out and hold true and i feel like the brotherhood that you and anthony hernandez have fluffy it shows in his last fight i mean his last fight Everyone was like, oh, 50-50, and Fluffy just made it and made it look easy. He made it look effortless. And, yeah. you know, it comes down to those that trust, like you mentioned, that ye those years of hard training, those years of trusting each other in your skill sets. Because if you don't have a good circle around you, you're never going to be able to consistently improve. You're just going to be looking for somewhere to find consistency, more importantly, as opposed to consistently improving. And we see that year 15 is coming up for you. And this is the best version of Max Payne we've ever seen yet, you know? Like, we're just seeing the improvements incrementally and just you hitting your best form. Talk to me about that longevity, one, maintaining that longevity for such a long time. And also, the fan support, because the, it feels like the Max Payne army has never been better. It's, it's bigger than ever, that's for sure. And the support is overwhelming. Talk to me about that and just getting that overwhelming amount of support from the fans at home. Man, loaded question. Um, I'll start with the longevity. Um, I'm real big on recovery. I used to totally overdo it, totally overtrain. Um, but now I'm ice bathing, I'm cryoing, I'm laying on my pimp mat, I'm doing red light, I'm stretching. I go, I see my guy Riley Zamora I do kin stretch twice a week now, which is like, um, really stretching out your your joints and getting your range open and strengthening the, your end of range for each joint like it's been excellent like like i've been tired my whole life just because from fighting and just in general but just last yeah i've been with riley for the last two months three months um leaps and bounds but i'm finding as i get older um you get wiser but i do with so much recovery I get, I see uh, the PT once a week. I chiropractor once a week, two massages a week. Um, one's like a sports massage to get me going. Other is like a softer, more more flowy, get my body loose kind of massage. So I'm finding that if I don't recover, I'm stiff, I'm tight, I'm getting hurt, but I mix it in. I train so hard because I'm fresh at practice rather than being sore from an even earlier practice in the day. I mean, even midday, like Wednesdays, I hop in the ice bath uh, midday, come out, ready to go. So I think, or I don't think I know, I know that this recovery has been putting me uh, feeling better when I get to practice, not being tight, not being sore. I was like, I'm so sore. Like, I'm not, you know, I'm not. And that allows me to work harder. And then this Max Payne Army, man, we've been... We've been at it for years. We've been at it for years. We've been at it for years. Um, yeah, just adding people on, adding people on, adding people on. And they're solid. They're solid, man. I'm solid too. So I think I know that's why they fuck with me. Um, they could see it. They could see it. They could fit. It's something you can feel for me. Um, I'm not bullshitting. I'm not beat around the bush. I might say stuff a little too blunt sometimes. That might be something I say. I say what everyone's thinking, you know, <laughs> and that's kind of, that's what I've been hearing a lot. So I'm going to keep doing that. Um, and I weeded a lot of people out, you know, over these years, people are like, that, that fool, I can't do, I can't, I can't listen to him or no shit like that. Then peace. If you don't like, you know, regular, you know, if you don't, I don't know, but I've weeded a lot of people out with my controversial ideas and thoughts and just what I say, I run off the mouth a lot. But that's good. I think now we're, everyone I speak to is pretty much on on that level to accept it, accept all the craziness that's going on. Uh, but I'm real crazy and stuff, but I'm real genuine at the same time. And I'll give you this straight off my back and fucking I'm real helpful. So I think that's a weird thing, too, for people that I'm so tough and mean, but I'm one of the nicest guys you ever meet, man. Uh, that's facts. No, yeah, absolutely. And I love that level of authenticity. It really it really seeps into for me as like a quote that I've heard recently. And I feel like it's a great representation of Max Griffin is 
Uh, it's a quote that Nipsey Hussle actually said. It's, would you rather be at war with the world and at peace with yourself, or would you rather be at peace with yourself and at war with the world? And I feel like we really see that in the level of authenticity, in the bluntness that you show. And it's just, it speaks to the caliber of person you are because, you know, you look at everything that you've built for yourself, Max, for your community, one that goes tooth and nail for those in your community. And we really see the inspiration that others draw from you. I wanted to ask you just on a personal level, obviously, I, I love asking this question to, to fighters who are not only fathers, but also fi- looking to find newfound senses of motivation. For you, the motivation in fighting has always been clear just to be one of the best out there and be a great ambassador for the sport. But more importantly, I always love seeing fighters who showcase another newfound sense of motivation to add on to the layers in the form of just being a good role model for those around them and their family. I want to ask you just in terms of your family and having do- your, you know, a strong support system, what has it meant for you to get an overwhelming sense of support from not only your family, but just being able to add that motivation into the fighting and keep going as your 15 approaches? Yeah, it's definitely it's definitely something I've had I've had for a long time. Um, um, but it matters. It matters a lot. I think a lot of people don't have that 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 support system. Um, and I'd say mine wasn't that strong strong as it is now. Um, you know, in the past, like my ex and whatnot back in the day. But um, you find that even some people you meet, you you feel like you've known them for years. You know, and then there's some people that you meet and you fucking hate. You know, <laughs> like, I don't know why, but just oil and vinegar, man. Some people, they're just, they just rub me wrong and that. But um, if you get the right people around you, um, family first for me. Um, yeah, I'm going to the birthdays now. I'm taking trainees off. I'll train later, you know what I mean, to, to get certain things done. And um, family is so important. You know, they'll be there when this shit's over. Uh, you don't want to ruin it before that. You know? No, yeah, absolutely. And Max, thank you so much for your time. It's been an honor and privilege for me to speak with you today. Get to pick your brain a little and get some perspective off you. At the end of the day, I always like to say these interviews for me are more of a gaining perspective moment with the fighters than anything else. And I just wanted to thank you for that for the bottom of my heart. Obviously, you mentioned earlier in the interview, two times a year right now is kind of like the goal for fighting. I want to ask you just in terms of goals of getting back into the octagon. How soon can the fans expect to see you back in the Let Octagon? Let me fight. Or, you know, is there a name at the tip of your tongue Let that you fight, really want to fight? I've been, wanting to, I've been wanting to fight. Dude, I've been I've been ready for months. They've asked me uh, when I want to fight. I told them we've been hitting up Sean. They told me October, November. It's like in halfway through October. So I'm maybe November, maybe December. But I mean, they, 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 they've offered me some short notice fights. They have offered me um michael chiesa um on a short it was a week's notice for ufc miami i said no i can't make weight in one week they have offered me ponza nibio um after d rod dropped out but that was like nine days i can't make that weight nine days i was at ufc noche so they're they're thinking of me but at the wrong time like i want to fight you know give me a fight man give me a fight i wanted to fight jeff neal Shit, Ponzi, all these fucking guys. I've called all these guys out for years. I've been, this is my seventh year UFC. I was in seventh year, seven years in August. Um, it's seven years. I wish I could fight more than twice a year. It's just kind of how they fucking, it's what they fucking play me. <laughs> Put me in coach. No, uh, yeah, but I mean, Jeff Neal in Houston would be, or in, uh, Austin would be sick. He's in, um, he's from, he's a Texas boy. No. Um, I'm just trying to fight in front of a crowd. I mean, the, 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 Apex is cool, but I want to fight in the front of the crowd like it fucking used to be, you know? No, yeah, absolutely. Get get Max Payne Griffin a fight, guys. Come on, Sean Shelby, Mick Maynard. If you guys are listening to this, get him a fight. He wants to fight more than twice a year. You heard it from the man himself. None of that short notice bullshit. Give him a full camp. Give him even half a camp. Just give him something to work with, guys. Come on. We got to see Max Payne Griffin in that octagon more than twice a year. You heard the names. Jeff Neal, Santiago Ponzinibbio, D-Rod maybe even. Who knows? This, this Look. We just need a fight with Max Payne by the end of this year. You know, thank you, Max, so much for your time. It's been an honor and privilege to speak with you. I look forward to watching you fight in that octagon very soon and continuing to see the leaps and bounds that you make, not only inside the octagon, but outside of the octagon as year 15 approaches and hopefully another five years on top of that or more. Who's counting, you know? Thank you so much for your time. To the fans at home watching, check out Max Payne on social media. Max Griffin is one of the best fighters, one of the nicest human beings. 
Check him out on social media. Really one of the most authentic and genuine ambassadors of our sport. Check him out. I'll be linking his stuff in the description down below. It's been me, Dan, from Fight Wave. Hope you guys have enjoyed this interview. Do be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and have a phenomenal day, guys.